Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be answering a question that was posed by one of the wonderful Patreons I have. And this is from a person named Ralph who was wondering, so okay, hypothetically, if our solar system's habitable zone has expanded further and further to the area where Saturn and Jupiter are, or even further than that, would these gas giants, like Jupiter that you see in the back there, evaporate because, you know, they're gas giants, and would objects like Europa, uh, Ganymede, Titan, and so on, would they actually turn into planetary objects? Or in other words, planets. So let's investigate this a little bit further, and welcome to the Math. And I think to try to simulate this at first, um, we can imagine that one day this actually is going to happen, because our sun one day will st start turning into what's known as a red giant. Its mass will remain the same for the most part, it will actually even decrease a little bit, but it's going to start growing because it's going to run out of hydrogen and helium, and the forces on the inside will start making it grow in size. So at some point, the actual habitable zone that you see in green will reach Saturn and um, Jupiter, but then we'll also go further and further. Our sun is going to get so big that it's going to first swallow Mercury, then it's going to swallow Venus, and then possibly even Earth. Mars may survive, but we're not really sure yet. At that point, though, the habitable zone is going to be really, really far away, probably past Pluto. Uh, the estimates right now suggest distances of about 40 to 70 astronomical units, so objects in this vicinity for example, all of these dwarf planets like Ares and Sedna uh, potentially might turn um, quite habitable. They'll probably become somewhat habitable looking water worlds with quite a lot of liquid water on the surface. But that's not really what we're talking about. What will happen to gas giants? What's going to happen to all of the objects orbiting them as well? Well, let's start with Saturn. So the thing about uh, gas giants is that They've already collected all of this material, they've already collected all of the gases and all of the so-called ices, like water and methane, so they're not going to go anywhere. These objects are not going to suddenly evaporate and disappear. And that's because they've already collected so much mass that they can easily hold on to all of the hydrogen, helium, and so on without really any problems. So even being so close to the actual sun and being illuminated by so much extra radiation, will not really change their mass that much. They might increase evaporation a little bit, but they're not going to suddenly disappear or possibly disappear at all. They will, however, turn much hotter. So the estimate for, um, for example, Saturn right now is approximately 300 degrees Celsius. So it's going to become what's known as a hot Jupiter. It's a type of a planet that we've discovered in a lot of different star systems where depending on the distance to the parent star, the actual planet becomes really hot, but it doesn't really disappear. Some of them do come really, really close to um, the parent star. Like for example, let's take Jupiter that's even closer and whose temperature right now is close to about 500 degrees Celsius and then place it even closer. Let's place it at a distance of about one and a half astronomical units so that its temperature increases even more. It's not going to start kind of burning and will start losing more material, but still not enough to disappear anytime soon. Uh, many of these planets actually do um, eventually disappear and leave behind the scorched cores, the actual hard core that's inside the planet, if they have one. And these are often known as Ktonian planets. I've made a few videos about this concept in one of the previous videos that you can probably find somewhere above my head right now. But for the most part, they actually still don't really change that much, especially if these objects are really massive. They can easily hold on to hydrogen and helium, and the sun itself will not really affect them that much, but it will change what's happening on the surface. So one major change that both Saturn and Jupiter will have is that their atmospheric conditions will start being even more extreme. And although currently it already seems to have quite a lot of storms and all kinds of hurricane looking conditions on the surface, it's going to increase dramatically. Like this whole planet is going to be covered with tremendous amount of winds and all kinds of uh, wind related activity. And the actual speed of the atmosphere may increase dramatically as well. 
The cloud patterns will also change dramatically. We don't really know how, but we know that it's going to be very, very different because it's going to be much harder now. But one of the biggest sort of changes is going to be related to the sudden increase in um, all sorts of charged particles that are going to be hitting this planet. And the way that it's going to reflect is by quite dramatically increasing the size and the power of the aurora effects that are present in the atmosphere of both Saturn and Jupiter. So these are going to be really extreme. The entire planet will probably be covered in these effects and they will be visible from really, really, really far away. And this is all because the sun itself will become dramatically more active. It's going to have a lot of so-called coronal mass ejections that are going to be so powerful that uh, the planets will probably just be lit up with all sorts of colors coming from those aurora. Now, because we currently don't have anything like this in our solar system, we can't even imagine how all of this will look like. Because right now, the most powerful uh, of these aurora are technically around Jupiter, and Jupiter is still pretty far away from the Sun. But luckily, Space Engine allows us to recreate this a little bit, and for all we know, maybe this is kind of what it's going to look like for at least one of these planets. And although it's possible that the extra radiation coming from the Sun might somehow disrupt the composition of the upper atmosphere, for the most part, the planet itself might not really change that much. Although the color of the planet and the appearance of the planet will probably change quite dramatically. Now what about moons of these objects, specifically moons of Saturn and Jupiter? Well, every moon that's currently made out of ice will obviously melt and lose a lot of this water over time because they're not going to have as much protection from the solar activity. And so even though technically for at least a few million years, Titan will probably have liquid water, at some point even all of this will eventually evaporate, leaving behind an empty shell, possibly a tiny rock actually. Uh, and this is because, well, first of all, the temperatures here are going to be really high. Right now, the temperature is showing at 300 degrees Celsius. This will definitely evaporate all of the water and all of the other gases here. And because it's technically going to be kind of like a small gas object, all of this gas will eventually escape and either combine with um, the parent planet, in this case, of course, the parent being Saturn, or it's possible that it's going to escape into the outer solar system and, um, well, nothing else will remain here. Except for whatever rocky substance it might contain on the inside. We don't really know if it has any core, but if it does, it's going to stay behind as a kind of a tiny reminder of what used to be here. All of the other objects will have very similar faith, and so um, the planet Saturn will probably lose uh, most of its moons because a lot of the moons here are ice-based and none of them will turn into planets because it's going to be really hot here. However, with objects like Neptune and Uranus, things might get a little bit more interesting, specifically in Neptune because it's the farthest planet here. First of all, neither of these objects will be affected in pretty much any way, they're just too far away from the Sun even though it's so gigantic now. But technically speaking, um, the moon Triton here would be very interesting because it might potentially become a very interesting habitable water world. However, the problem with Triton is that because it's currently orbiting in such a weird way, it's actually slowly approaching the planet. And by that time, it will most likely collide with uh, Neptune. It will probably not exist anymore. So if somehow it manages to survive in about 5 billion years from now, it might turn into a relatively comfortable looking water world with potentially even some atmosphere, but uh, due to the fact that it's way, way smaller than even our moon, and also because it's most likely similar in composition to Pluto, so it's essentially all ices, it's not going to have any surface to stand on, so it's going to be just a liquid water world. But all of the other objects here uh, may kind of still stay in the same place and not really disappear anywhere because they're just too far away from the sun, it's not really going to affect them as much, and neither Neptune nor Uranus are going to experience any major changes. So all in all, it's going to be a very different solar system from what we know today, and this particular period will probably last for just under 1 billion years. And after this, well, that's going to be the end of most of life in the solar system if it still exists here. And that's because our sun is going to release all of this mass here, well, most of the mass, and create a beautiful phenomenon known as planetary nebula. This is going to be our sun, it's going to be a white dwarf, 
the core of our star in the middle and the rest of the stuff is going to be the leftover star material. And all of this material, as it escapes the solar system, is going to well, literally scorch our planets, probably stripping them of everything and um, leaving very little behind. Now, we don't really know how powerful it's going to be and if there's going to be anything left, but life cannot possibly survive these events. It's going to be very difficult. Unless, of course, we advance to the point where we can actually control this and somehow avoid this. And following this, that's all that's going to be left. The white dwarf known as the sun, with a few leftover materials, like for example, these rings that are used to be planets, used to be actual objects, but now are just the debris and the leftovers from what used to be. So that's going to be the end of our solar system, and that's based on the fact that we've observed these around other white dwarfs out there in our galaxy. And obviously we don't know if all of the stars follow the same sort of path, and if they all end up with the ring system, and they, if they all end up losing all of their planets, but so far that's kind of what we've seen. And although there might be some other leftovers, like tiny uh, objects that resemble planets, all of the planets that we have today are probably going to be gone. And on that note, that's all I wanted to mention in this video. Hopefully this answers your question, Ralph. And if you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe, share this video with someone who enjoys watching space videos and wants to learn more about space, universe, and science in general, and come back tomorrow to learn something else. Also, consider supporting this channel on Patreon because it does help me a lot, and you get to ask questions like Ralph, and then I get to answer them using simulations and video games. I'll see you guys tomorrow, come back tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.